a new species within our very genus. A species that we have called Homo naledi. Naledi meaning star. And the chamber we have called the Dinaledi chamber, our chamber of stars. They are an extraordinary species. Known now from the largest assemblage of early fossils ever discovered in the history of our science on this continent, with more than 15 individuals of all ages. We have not one or two, but in fact a minimum of 15 skeletal individuals represented in the fossil deposit. Uh, these are some of the most complete dental sets that we can reconstruct from them. And one reason why I wanted to show these is that they show you a range of ages. From the top left, we have a, a very young child, uh, an infant, and ranging up to very old adults at the bottom right. We represent the entire demography of a population, ages from birth all the way to old age. And we have anatomical evidence from almost all parts of the skeleton. We see a creature that has a fascinating mix of characteristics. A mix of characteristics that include some unusually human-like features. This foot, which was found complete in, an ar in, in articulation in the deposit, shows a very human-like foot anatomy. A foot that's very difficult to distinguish in many ways from our own. It's very clear that the legs and feet of Homo naledi were made for long-distance and effective walking. They have that human-like pattern of activity with the way that they move across the landscape but a hand that has very curved finger bones, more curved than any member of our genus, curved in the way that some of the earliest hominins are curved, probably indicative of locomotor activities like climbing that they would have been doing with their hands as well. Their legs and feet, as I mentioned, very human-like. Their hands, a mix of human-like and primitive characteristics. Their teeth, relatively human-like. Their skulls, like the skulls of early homo, but unlike those other early homo species, their brain is relatively very small. This brain, of between 450 and 550 cubic centimeters, is a third the size of human brains today. It's comparable in size to early hominins that we call Australopiths. The other thing that's important is that we could work out where the sediments entered the cave. They all entered the cave towards the right of this diagram at the top of the cave, at the entryway into the cave. And that's the point where you currently enter the cave as well. So it appears that in the past, the sediments and the fossils contained in the sediments entered the cave in exactly the same point as where we are now entering the cave as well. So the morphology of this chamber, the shape of this chamber, has not changed over time. Already, I told you, we, we've only got hominids. That says something about the environment itself. Why only hominids? Why nothing else? The quality of the bone is extraordinary. A lot of the bone material is beautifully preserved. It doesn't show any evidence of cut marks, so there hasn't been some sort of fighting going on with people eating each other in there. These bones are pristine. It doesn't show evidence of green breakage. So, when these animals entered the cave, when they were still alive or just recently uh, died, we can't find any evidence on any of these bones of tooth marks or bite marks by carnivores. There is no damage. There's no evidence that there were carnivores involved in bringing these bones in there. There is a saying that when you eliminate all the probable, you are left with the impossible. We have eliminated in the dental eddy chamber the idea that this is a mass death. We have eliminated the possibility of a catastrophe. These individuals came in one at a time over some period of time. They were not all in there together. They did not wash in there. They were not moved by water. They were not eaten by some super predator that could fit through an 18 centimeter slot and fit fed only on Homo naledi and dragged its bodies into the deep chamber. They were not scavenged there. We are also left with the idea that they did not live there. There's no archeology. span There's no sign of habitation. This chamber has never been open to the exterior world. Its entrance has been difficult, 
and it itself only opened to another interior part of the cave. The route to get to this chamber was not easy. It was so not easy that no other medium or large sized vertebrate before, during, or after this event could actually get into this chamber. And that has led us, ladies and gentlemen, to the rather remarkable conclusion that we have just met a new species of human relative that deliberately disposed of its dead inside of the Dinaletti chamber here in the cradle of humankind. The impact of that is significant. Until this moment in history, we thought that the idea of ritualized behaviors directed towards the dead, things like burial or secreting your dead into deep chambers, was utterly unique to Homo sapiens. It in fact, perhaps, identified us. It may have been our singularly unique thing. Us, Neanderthals, archaic Homo sapiens, a recent phenomenon that separated us from the animal kingdom. The idea that we recognized our own mortality and other self, and that we would go to great effort to remove friends, relatives, and even the unrelated bodies from the external environment and place them away from that world. We saw ourselves as different. We have now seen, we believe, a species that had that same capacity. And that is an extraordinary thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you a new species of human ancestor, Homo naledi. Um, the Why we haven't given a date. We can tell from Naledi's morphology that it comes from deep time. It comes from the root of the genus Homo. And if our present understanding of the age of that origins is correct based on fragmentary fossils, then the species Naledi must be older than 2.5 to 2.8 million years. The species. That does not mean the fossils in this chamber are that old. But we do not know how old those fossils are. 